Hey guys, it's Brandon. Gonna do something a little different today. We have, uh, sorry, that was my cell phone. We have a uh, s little bit of an appearance from uh, GM Capilano Bridge, which is Hikaru Nakamura here on the ICC after a relatively dismal play in uh, the FIDE Grand Prix. He lost like 20 FIDE ELO points. And uh, so now he's back on the ICC for the first time in a few weeks, I guess. And uh, playing some Blitz games. So this is a three-minute game right now. He's playing versus somebody named uh, I Am Big Al. And uh, this isn't the auto pairing. This is a, a this is a, a challenge system. So his he's on Blitz rating is 3159, and this guy's Blitz rating is 2431. So a little bit of a mismatch here. Um, Car is basically the favorite versus whoever he's playing. So uh, while I was doing the introductions, it looked like we had some kind of modern defense or appearance or, or something uh, in this opening. And um, excuse me, I'm just going to turn my phone down here. And uh, what is this flag here that Hikaru is playing? It says, I don't know what this flag is. Oh, Panama. Hmm. All right, so queens are off. Um, just a... Uh, White seems okay here. Uh, black has a couple of bad pawns. Hikaru has these two pawns on the e-file that are a little uh, shaky. And maybe could be targets like knight g5. Uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, now this pawn is, is also only protected by this knight on b7, which is not doing much. So, uh, okay, in return, he's got F-file pressure, and D, uh, he's got the F and D-files to work with. So, okay, cutting out knight G5s. Okay, so the, so kicking the knight back, will he go to E5? Probably not. Back to F6. Takes, would fix his pawns. No, he would still lose a pawn, though, because he, oh, he would probably take up the king of the rook. So, okay, the knight comes into D5 with a double attack. Trying to fix his pawn structure, possibly he'll retake with the uh, d-pawn if the knight captures, which it doesn't. Uh, so, a little pressure on the g-pawn here. Uh, okay, threatening to land a fork or play b4 first and then and then land the fork, uh, which is cut out. So some pressure on this knight now threatening, not quite threatening b4 yet, but uh, Hikaru likes these uh, tactically complicated positions where pieces are lots of pieces are attacked, Lots of things are, are in the works, and it's really tough for somebody to outplay him uh, in those positions. He's almost always going to be the better tactician. And, um, okay, so B4 finally does come in. He's got a bit of a time edge now, about 50 seconds. So, um, okay, the knight comes to the rim. Not very good. Not a very good square for the knight, but it can probably come back here to C C5, which it does. Uh, I guess you probably have to take that knight. But then rook here, attacking the pawn and the knight. Is that possible? Uh, I'm not sure. He has to be careful of a move like g6. Wow, he just retreats the knight. He doesn't bother taking. I guess there was some, some tactic he saw there that was uh, not going to be good for him. So, okay, pushing the knight away. Knight comes back to g6, takes, takes. Now knights are both on the back ranks. Oh, and okay, so now he's getting the knight here to defend this pawn, which was a target on the A file. Okay, so pressure on the knights and this pawn on uh, on c2. Neither knight, can, neither of these knights can move, uh, or else the other one hangs. So, yeah, maybe he's got to get this knight on f7 back into the game somewhere. Looking for some activity with the rook. Rook to the seventh, maybe rook b7. Nope, he brings the knight to b7. So another attack on this pawn. So maybe rook a1 is a threat. But yeah, this knight was hanging. I said that earlier. So uh, looks like they're going to go again. So a rematch, and we're getting a Sicilian. Uh, let's see what kind of Sicilian we get. Oh, a b3. Yeah, he in the opening he likes to play non-theoretical lines. Uh, Hikaru often. And it's an open Sicilian now, but and it's uh, actually it's more specifically a Meraxi bind. We're going into a hedgehog setup for Black. He likes to play these uh, non-theoretical openings, and just so his opponent can't quickly drum out, you know, 20 moves of theory or 10 moves of theory or whatever, and he can just sort of 
uh, get a better position and outplay them from the opening. This is a uh, this is his sort of general strategy, and uh, it's not just you know in, in ICC blitz games. I've seen videos of him playing in real blitz tournaments, you know, versus the top players in the world, like you know the World Blitz Championships, and he goes for uh, he goes for strange openings like the Trumpovsky and stuff, things he wouldn't normally play, um, you know, in a long game. So it's a, it's a pretty good strategy. So what's going on here? Uh, he played the move G5. Maybe looking to push G4. Yeah, he, put, he pushed G4 and looking for some kind of kingside attack, F4. Usually uh, black will try to play for B5, but he's tried to lock down on B5 with this A5, C4, A4, C4 combination. Now looking for some pressure on E4, possibly. And uh, overprotecting this B3 pawn, so the knight could be free to move. Uh, he was threatening knight takes knight, and then knight takes pawn. So, okay, what's what's going to happen now? So he launches forward with the H pawn. Black brings his bishop back just to defend. Maybe he's planning to play G6, bishop G7. That looks like a pretty good maneuver to try and uh, defend and also get the bishop a little more active. But now if he plays G6, H takes G, the H file will be open right away. So, um, yeah, Black just needs to keep some pressure going here. Oh, okay, he's... He's hitting back in the center with an e5 with a move e5, and uh, trying to bring his knight into f6. But yeah, that did leave a very nice square on d5 for the knight. Now trying to uh, win a pawn here with bishop takes knight and then and then queen takes pawn. Maybe he does have this nice pass pawn here uh, in the center. Hmm, what's the idea? Rook opposite the queen. Will there be any, any tactics like... Uh... Oh, now he's just going in for the attack again. So not just going to win this pawn. going to go in for the attack. And uh, he's actually a little behind on the clock. Now it's a bit coming down to even. Usually he's way, way ahead on the clock. Okay, he hasn't played Blitz in a couple weeks, so... Maybe he's slightly rusty, <laughs> quote-unquote, for uh, by Hikaru standards. So f6 was played. And if the pawn takes check, you'll probably just see king to king to h8, and he'll and white will try to use black will try to use this white pawn as as if it was one of his own pawns, just blocking uh, blocking any entry routes for the uh, for the queen. You won't see this pawn be taken. Uh, maybe trying to soak up some pressure here. If bishop takes pawn, knight takes. No, nope. okay, that was an interesting idea. But what about bishop takes now? Oh yeah, the knight's hanging. <laughs> that too. And now the queen coming in. Is there a perpetual here? Looks like there's a lot of pieces in the area. No check here. Check here. Maybe there's... The king is just open enough to pull off this perpetual here. Uh, but he doesn't want the perpetual. He's going for... He's going for more. It looks like that's a nice tactic, actually. What can what can he do? Because if he if he attacks the queen, then the queen just moves out of the way with check, and then the queen hangs. So there's no there's no Zwischenzug here. And if he moves the queen, then the bishop is hanging. So he's going to have to come up with something here, or, or he's going to lose a piece. So I guess he's just going to lose the piece now, and uh, try to see try to play this end game just down a piece for couple of pawns. Oh no, but there was well, there was a piece sack earlier. He had already won this knight. So this is still even material. Okay, so now what's going on? Um, even material in terms of pieces, opposite color bishops, a couple extra pawns for for white. Okay, so our queens are coming off. There's this pass pawn on the F file though. Uh, on the E file for uh, white. And he, now the bishop from over here is supporting a push to E3. So, okay, connected pass pawns on e4, d5, could, could be moved maybe. Bishop protecting this pawn, attacking the rook, which he just leaves to its fate. That was very strange. So now a car is up a rook, and uh, yeah, that was a very strange move from, from Big Al. So, okay, they're going again. And again, we're seeing this d6, g6 system here with... Uh, 
it's like a Pierce or yeah, I guess it transposes into a Pierce defense here. Um, now with c5, and um, that was a pawn sac. Interesting pawn sac. Uh, if he took the pawn with the, the c pawn, the queen was hanging, and then. Um, okay, so bishop e3, just some development. Queen goes back to a5, and now the quick h file attack. Of course, uh, White had played h5, h4 before. Wow, allowing h6. Is he going to play h6 or open the h file? He played h6, yeah, so now the bishop is here. I don't know if that should have been allowed. This is awkward now for uh, for black. This is, he's going to reroute the bishop to to e7 and then castle. This is a very annoying pawn for uh, for for black. Mate could always be threatened here on g7, but he could always bring the bishop back to e7, I guess. So the king didn't actually have to castle here. Now the rook is already sort of in the game on the h file and on the third rank. So I guess there was uh, no need to castle really for white. So okay, um, could dark squares could be an issue here uh, if the queen ever managed to get on the long diagonal. Of course, it would be mate on g7. So uh, let's see what white decides to do here. Yeah, White's probably okay. He's got the two bishops, a little bit of extra space. Um, now pushing f4, so going for some aggressive play on the king side. The rook moves out of the way opposite the queen. Now if e5, then pawn takes, and then the queen would be attacked, so that would be a pawn sack. So d5, striking out in the center. Uh, if takes, pawn takes, um, uh, d4 would be threatened. Yeah, this was, this was a move anyway, 14 two pieces. And, uh, yeah, this is a very strange-looking formation. But I guess, on the one hand, it looks like there's a lot of pawns on the, on the king. Wow, sacking a piece now. This can't work, right? Maybe his idea is to take on... on uh, on e6, I, I guess. The, the idea is this pawn is dangerous. Really, really dangerous. So, so if one of the pieces gets taken, then e takes, and if uh, e takes again, then f7 check. King has to go into the corner, and then queen f6. But the bishop is covering the mate square. So, but it still looks dangerous. And well, he took the pawn, so that's fair enough. He decided not to take the piece. Still, the piece is hanging. So now he takes the piece, and uh, I can't believe this. I really can't believe that this would be. A serious problem, because now the the problem is there's no real way for for the queen or anything to get in. This the long diagonal is now cut by this pawn on f6. So the bishop is coming here, and now now he's trying to get rid of this bishop and uh, pointing at f7, which could be dangerous. Uh, some tactics on f7 could be dangerous. Now the rook may be coming down here, but the knight is nicely covering the the seventh rank. But maybe there could be tactics with the bishop moving, taking the knight, and then bringing the rook down to the seventh to attack, like an exchange sack here. That'd be dangerous if it's not if it's not mating, because uh, uh, it's, it's he's already down a piece. Uh, no, he's not down a piece. This, this material evened out, so I mis miscalculated something somewhere. But okay, the king is open, and. Um, Queen h4, check, maybe is a threat. Um, yeah, it's definitely a threat to pick off the h pawn. Also attacking the f pawn. So, yeah, black has to figure out a move here. Okay, he played, he's doubling on the e file. This is now leaving this bishop on pre, but he can't be taken. Yeah, it can, it can be taken, because uh, there's no back rank threat yet. But... Black Hakaro has to watch out for his back rank. But okay, takes rook check, rook takes rook. Still okay. Uh, maybe I wasn't calculating something there. So okay, the queen coming in. This looks dangerous again. Possibly for Hakaro. He's uh, four, five, six, maybe three, four. He's up a pawn, but mm, he's uh, he's White has some initiative now. Okay, so is he going to pick up the bishop now? Okay, he picks up the bishop. And I guess White 
uh, resigned. That was an interesting game. Somewhere along the way, I thought he was up a piece, but he, he, this fork... Okay, they're going again. Well, onwards we go. Uh, okay, so he opened with e4. Okay, so this game was aborted. And uh, so we're going into something else. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. They both started some unrated blitz games, and each one resigned once. So, okay. Now it looks like we're going to have the same two playing again. So now, uh, Hikaru has white. And uh, now this guy, Big Al, has gone for the same sort of similar setup that Hikaru has been playing against him. And now Hikaru is playing with a4 and g4. So I don't know what's going on in this game. I guess we'll find out. It's kind of a funny game. Um... So let's let's see where they go with this. C5 striking the center. Uh, he can take the pawn without then capturing the queen because uh, he can play knight takes. Or uh, if pawn if pawn retakes, then uh, the knight is blocking the queen trade. So I don't. He's taking a while here to make moves. This is unusual for Hikaru. He's usually very quick. Maybe he just wants to give his opponent some, some time advantage here. So let's see, let's just see what he comes up with. Rook b8, trying to get off the, the diagonal of the bishop, maybe preparing b5 at some point. I don't know. Both of these guys are playing a little slow, but especially Hikaru, this is... Very strange for uh, Hikaru. So, yeah. Maybe he's uh, really giving him a time advantage here. I don't, I don't know what else to, what else could possibly be going on. Or maybe he's on the phone. I don't know. Both, neither of them seem to realize this is a three-minute game. There's no reason for for Big Al to even think this long about a reply here because I, I highly doubt that Hikaru was calculating that move in some crazy tactics or something. So he just seems like he's distracted or something. So, okay, we had the exchange on uh, C4, bringing the knight into D4. Uh, C5, to, uh, C5 takes D4. And now he's playing with this small... Uh, He's playing with a small center on d6 and e6, like Shogunenga in center. So, okay, the knight comes back, and uh, I'm getting some, some messages here. Uh, but uh, what's going on here? So the knights are, are being... Uh, so now they're playing a little bit quicker. What happened was this pawn was threatened and pinned, so he put the knight here to block the bishop attacking the pawn. And now, now this knight might be a little bit loose. He has to be careful. There's tactics with maybe this knight moving, and then the bishop and the queen are converging on this knight. Knight check, I guess, is possible. I don't know if it accomplishes a whole lot. Maybe queen d2 here, yeah, with the tempo on this pawn. So now it's just moving. So the knight's in g6, and maybe looking to come into f4. Probably can't right now because it's just a pawn sack, but the f4 square is a hole. Um, okay, bishop coming to h6 with, uh, to b6 with a tempo. And now putting pressure on the b pawn, on the d pawn, which is a little bit of a target. He can't play d5 right away. And how to defend this pawn? I guess he doesn't. He just decides to let it go. So he takes the pawn and hangs on to the queen. Mm. This bishop is a little loose, yes. So now the, pawn, the knight is, takes his threaten, but okay. He moves the bishop out of the way, that's fine. But uh, and f4 is not a threat, is it? f4 takes, takes, takes. Yeah, there's no f4 here. 
Or is it possible because of Bishop takes here? Oh, a knight sack. That was a nice shot. Knight d5. If pawn takes... He takes the queen. And now, now the pawn... When the bishop moves, what's the idea? Huh. That was odd. That really was a peace sack. I don't see any tactic. I don't think that worked out as, as well as he wanted it to. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two pawns for the peace. But, okay. Looking for some active play here. Now the pawns are a little shattered. But that was a real peace sacrifice. I don't, I don't think that worked out the way he really wanted it to. But, okay, here comes a pawn. Um, okay, the pawn's protected now. The bishop is looking at the queen egg square. So there's there's some compensation here. Two pawns and and, uh, and some, some passers, the pass pawns at that. But, okay, the knight was attacked twice and hangs this bishop. But now the rook... And, okay, but maybe the idea now is that the knight is trapped. Yeah, that bishop is really dominating this knight because the, all the squares are cut off by the bishop, but now f3. Nope, he's just pushing forward with uh, promoting his pawns. Oh, and if pawn takes, then bishop skewers. So that was a nice tactic. I was just thinking f3 to protect the bishop. Oh, taking the pawn? Now, now the pawn is threatening to promote, so there's no... But now discovered checks are coming into the picture. So there's some counterplay for black here. And only 10 seconds on the clock for Karu. So offering the rook trade. But then double... What about double check here? Or just blocking. Yeah. So now this knight is... But this knight is hanging. Okay, so now attacking the knight and threatening the queen. So what a wild finish that was. Yeah, now pinning the knight. And just two bishops... For t he's just down all these pieces. And and in the end, now it's just... <laughs> don't even really know what happened there, but it's... it's This is not... Uh, and, okay, Black is out of time. Yeah. So those moves were relayed a little slowly. But... Uh, yeah, I don't even... I don't even know. It just ended up that in the end, with all those tactics, impossible to follow, really. Nobody but, I don't even know if, I mean, clearly, I don't even know if Ficaro was following all those tactics at the speed with which they were being played. But, uh, it just ended up here that it looks like he's just down in exchange after all those, those tactics and all that play came. So, um, yeah, I don't know. They don't seem to be playing again, so maybe I'll finish up the video here, but, uh, Hope you guys enjoyed uh, getting a chance to see um, Karu Nakamura, America's number one, and uh, formerly world number four or five, but he had a terrible tournament. And I think he's back down to number ten now on the live rating list anyway. So hope you guys enjoyed getting to see a little bit of that, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.